Hey, welcome back to 1 Samuel 17. David just slew Goliath yesterday morning, and we're carrying on today, verses 52 through 58. Let's read it. Now the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines as far as the entrance of the valley to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell along the road to Sha'araim, even as far as Gath and Ekron. Then the children of Israel returned from chastening the Philistines, and they plundered their tents. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. When Saul saw David going out against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As your soul lives, O king, I do not know. So the king said, Inquire whose son this young man is. Then as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said to him, Whose son are you, young man? And David answered, I am the son of your servant, Jesse the Bethlehemite. So this is kind of the, the aftermath. The Hebrews go out, the Israelites, army goes out and does terrible damage to the Philistine army. But now the question obviously comes up because just a couple of chapters ago we had David playing uh, David playing music to calm Saul when Saul had was having different kinds of trouble. And now it's like Saul doesn't even know who he is. So different things. This could be that David is changed over a period of months and he's he's made, maybe had a growth spurt. He doesn't recognize him. This could be that Saul's having some kind of mental issues. He doesn't really remember David. He didn't take that note. I mean, when you're the king and you've got a person to bring you your grapes and a person to, to do this and do that and do all that for you, maybe some people don't really, you know, completely register who that is. Here's another thing, and it could be this, that, and I think maybe this might be the likely one. It's not that Saul doesn't really remember who David is. It's that Saul is telling his general, he says, let's find out a lot more about this guy. Let's find out a lot more. Tell me, I know he's the son of Jesse. Tell me a lot more. He says he doesn't know who he is, but maybe he's just asking for a lot more information. Hey, let's let's work up a file on this guy because yeah, David is has prevailed and and right now everybody is singing David's praises. The king is is a little bit becoming focused now on David. Maybe the king has some special concerns because look, who's the one that fought the battle? It wasn't, we wanted Saul to be king so that he would be like all the nations. He would go out and fight our battles for us. But instead we have this uh, this relatively small guy who goes out with a, with a sling and, and knocks him down. So Saul is looking at this from his political perspective. Saul is concerned. I think there's a growing concern in the mind of Saul. I want to know more about David. I want it right now. That's what's going on. So again, for us, we look at this today and what do we say? David's a, basically a nobody, but now he's a somebody. He's a somebody because he's a person of courage, a person of boldness, a person of faith. And all of us are somebody if we're a person of boldness, courage, and faith. Maybe we're still nobodies in, in, in many respects, but it doesn't really matter. doesn't matter really. What matters is what is God's purpose? What does God want me to do today? And am I willing to do it today? That's what matters. So the church is looking for people to step out and follow the Lord Jesus. Are you one of those? Am I one of those? That's the real question. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, Help us to be uh, willing to act out our faith, act out our beliefs. When we do act out our beliefs, help us so that uh, nothing goes to our head and we begin to claim credit for ourselves and think, well, I guess I am pretty great. Uh, no, we know, Lord, that you are the deliverer. You're the one who gives us strength to fight, strength to make war, strength to be courageous and a man of peace, a woman of peace. You're the one who gives us the, what we need to do your will. So thank you for giving that to David. And again, we look at there, sort of a picture there for us in a time when people of courage are few. People, There were very few people of courage in that valley when the Philistines were lined up to battle the Hebrews. Today, there's not so many Christians with lots of courage against this seemingly, seemingly overpowering secular uh, culture that is upon us. But Lord, it's not true that we are hopeless. In fact, you will prevail just if we could only be on your team. Help us to be that way, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's be on God's team and the sky's the limit. There is no limit to somebody who trusts in Jesus. Trust in Jesus today. See what happens. God be with you.